Welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews in partnership with Roadrunner Sports, and today we're taking a look at a waterproof trail running shoe. It's the Hoka Speedgoat GTX. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say if these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports, however, no one had a chance to preview this video and this file synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. I've already done a review on the Hoka Speedgoat 6, which is this gray shoe in my hand. Now the only difference between this and the Speedgoat 6 GTX, the black shoe, is the upper, the midsole, and outsole are exactly the same. Now the GTX edition has a Gore-Tex upper, which means it's going to be waterproof, while the original Speedgoat 6 has a more breathable mesh material. The Speedgoat is Hoka's do-it-all trail running shoe. It does a little bit of everything. It's also a great hiking option as well if you don't want to go to a full-on hiking boot. A trail runner like the Speedgoat is going to be much lighter and more nimble. This is just a good all-around outdoor shoe, and if you're someone who wants a waterproof option, that's where this GTX or Gore-Tex Edition comes in. The GTX Edition costs $170, while the original Speedgoat 6 is $155. The stack height is exactly the same with 40 millimeters in the heel and 45 in the forefoot for the classic 5 millimeter Hoka heel-to-toe drop. Funny enough, the GTX edition is actually heavier, coming in at 10.6 ounces, while the original Speedgoat 6 is 9.8, so you do have a slightly heavier shoe with the waterproof upper. And speaking of the waterproof upper, it's Gore-Tex Invisible Fit. It's a very thin material, a single layer throughout the entire upper itself, and for me, it did fit true size with regard to length. However, I do want to say that the toe box is rather narrow, and on the GTX edition, I had some rubbing on the outside of my pinky toe, which was not the case at all with my entire time with the regular Speedgoat 6. For, so for whatever reason, the toe box on the GTX uh, edition just bothered me a bit more because it is rather tight. Now the overlay on the toe guard is going to be kind of this rubberized synthetic material which gives you a light level of protection. It's not the most stiff. If we go on to the tongue, it's fairly similar to the Speedgoat 6 as well. Uh, you get a few small foam blocks to help with lace pressure protection. However, the big difference here is on the GTX version, the tongue is integrated directly into the side of the upper, which keeps water and debris from getting inside your shoe, and the tongue is waterproof as well. So it just keeps uh, any other material, water, or anything like that from getting inside, which makes sense because this is the waterproof edition of the Speedgoat. And then finally, if you go back to the ankle and Achilles section, you have a slightly stiff, moderately stiff heel counter with a ton of padding back here, especially in the Achilles region. And from the looks of things, it feels even more plush compared to what we see on the Speedgoat 6. So for whatever reason, it looks like they gave us a bit more padding. Now for me, I thought the lockdown was great, really had no issue with my heel coming out at all. And I thought the midfoot lockdown was spot on. Uh, again, the toe box just a little bit cramped for me, so just be uh, be aware of that. One other small thing I want to talk about is the tongue. It's a more low-profile tongue. I know some people prefer a taller tongue on their trail running shoe or something maybe not as short. It was not a problem for me at all, but I do want to point that out because it is a more low-profile tongue setup. As far as the waterproofing goes, I did test it out, ran through a few puddles and water features. I also just kind of dunked my foot in a stream for five minutes to see if I could feel any water seeping in and I couldn't. My sock remained perfectly dry. I also got the water up near the tongue area and again no issues there. Something to kind of keep in mind here is it's a low profile shoe so water can spill in on the sides fairly easily compared to a mid trail running shoe and if water does get in it doesn't really have that many drainage slots because the water is kind of locked in with this Gore-Tex upper and you have to kind of take your shoe off and dump it out. So that is one disadvantage compared to a regular trail running shoe where it's a little bit easier for things to drain and it's a bit more breathable with a non-Gore-Tex upper where this did not have much airflow at all. I know Gore-Tex is supposed to be kind of more of a membrane, but it is a rather closed off experience with regard to airflow. As far as the midsole goes, it is a very firm compression molded EVA foam. You do have quite a bit of it under your foot, but there is not a whole lot of squish or bounce at all with the Speedgoat 6. Both GTX and original, uh, they feel pretty much identical. Now, this makes for a more stable trail running shoe, and that's partially because, yes, you have the firmer ride, but also you have some kind of mini foam sidewalls. Your foot sits within the shoe. Stability or just overall guidance was not an issue whatsoever 
with the speed goat the one drawback is if you do prefer a little bit more squish or just want to feel some more cushioning i think you might want to go in a different direction because again this compression molded eva foam is quite firm moving on to the outsole we have five millimeter vibram mega grip lugs same traction pattern like we see with the regular speed goat six I was quite impressed. They used it for hiking, trail running, rock scrambling, and it just did its job. It's kind of one of those situations where if you don't have to think about it, it's just doing what it's supposed to do. And there really wasn't a situation where I wanted more traction. I thought it got the job done. Now, one thing you do have to be careful of, the lugs are fairly close together so they can get caked over by mud fairly easily. But overall, really like what this setup has done for me and it's got me through a lot of different adventures. Well, that concludes the review. Let me know in the comments if you prefer the Gore-Tex or non-Gore-Tex version and why. I would love to hear from you. I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.